opportunities that we're receiving in life to connect ourselves to a divine divine source to an endless source of power and wisdom it's written in the amazing book of Likute Moran that every person in the world can achieve the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, can become like Moshe Rabbeinu. And Tana Debi Eliyahu, the book that's been written by Eliyahu Navi, the prophet, is saying that Eliyahu Navi testifies that every person in the world, doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, a Jewish person or a non-Jew, a free person or a slave, every one of them, corresponding to the purity of the intention of their hearts so the divine spirit will hover on them they will have an access to the wisdom of the world to come now there is a very very ancient source of wisdom that we're asking Hashem Barach always to bring us back to that place and we're saying, Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem, renew our days to be like the earliest days, the ancient days. And when a person is connecting himself to that, to Kedem, to that ancient time, before of time, actually, so he's got now a connection and access to the ancient, ancient archive of wisdom of the Creator. So he can know everything, anything he wants, he can know. He can tell everything he, 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 he wants to know. He can understand everything that he's, that he's, that he, he wish to know. And that connection is available for every human being, for every person. Now, you look at yourself and you feel so far from that, like you don't even know what you want to eat for lunch. Like you don't know what to put in your own sandwich. So how are you going to know the answer for crazy deep questions? Inside of ourselves, there is a source. There is a connection, a door to infinity. And the evil inclination the Yetzirah is working every second of his life, means working on us every second of our lives. He's doing the same job for thousands of years already, and with us he's working every moment of our life to disturb, dis, 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 distract, yes, distract our thoughts, from the truth to a fake world of illusions of imagination <coughs> that we will lose our connection to the truth but in the moment that the person connects himself to the truth so then he he becomes connected to that source of wisdom now the Yetzirah is working so hard on us all of the time that we will forget how powerful we are and how close we are to that purpose, to our endless success. And he's working day and night on that just to make us busy and confused and scared and terrified and worrying all of the time. And once you're hungry and once you're tired, and all of the time there's something else to focus on except of your ability to become one with the Creator, with the purpose of your life, just to be one with Him. In this world you have billions of, of separations, of dividings, you have houses, windows, walls, carpets, tiles, furnitures, tools, vessels. Yeah. You have so many options to think about something else except of unity. And that's the reason why people are dropping the faith and losing their mind with all of the, 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 the endless numbers of, 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 of distractions. 
<clears throat> but if you're just going to drop it all, always, in every situation, when you're hungry, say to yourself, no, it's a lie. I'm not hungry. Maybe I can eat now. Maybe I should eat now. But I'm not hungry. That's an imagination. When you're upset, oh, relax. Don't be angry. Just breathe. Say to yourself, no. Someone is trying to distract my thoughts from faith, from the Creator. And then you can drop all of your problems aside and to give them so much less power to affect your life that you will be free. You're going to set yourself free. Because really to find solutions to all of your problems, okay, I need to find the answers to all of the things that connected to the house, that connected to the family. Every one of the family, all of, every person, every family member got a list of, of issues and things that need to be... You can't do that. The mortgage. You... I bought a house in my life and I still don't know how you, how you can do that. I don't like how you buy a house. It's so complex, and in Israel, it's like, it's impossible. And I did it, and I still don't know how you do that. It's like you you can do it, but in the end, after Hashem helps you, so you it's behind you somehow to get married, to have shalom bay, to have peace with your wife, with your family, to raise your children. It's it's an impossible mission. You cannot do that. It it never works. But still, you look. Oh, I have twenty years behind my back. Somehow, how? No one knows. But we're here. The fact is that we're here now. So you passed few tests that every one of them was impossible to pass. How? Because the truth is that it was not impossible at all. Just your illusion that you were in charge on fixing those problems, that it was your responsibility, that you had to take care of all of those things, that you had to make it all. That was the mistake. The truth is that you didn't do anything. The Hashem Baruch just brought everything together and you just, along the way, had your foreign thought of thinking that your reality in that game. That you felt, oh no, I need to cook. Oh, I need to make. Oh, I need to do. Oh, I need to stay awake. And now you're going to ask, oh, so what, you want me to go to sleep? Shall I go to sleep? No. Maybe if you're going to go to sleep, you're going to fall into another illusion of not having food and not, and not having money. And it's also an illusion. But it's a big, big, very complex game. But the real answer is where your mind is. When your mind is outside in the external world, and all of the time you're busy, and you must take care, and you have to cover, and you have to watch, and you have to see, and you have to worry about everything, so you, you, it, it drains you, it takes out your power. And in the end, you find yourself empty, and, and weak, and tired, and don't know, and confused, and... What am I going to do with this and with that? And I can't do it anymore. And it's too much for me. And I don't know what to do. And you start losing your, your, your inner joy, your inner connection to happiness, to the source of your life. Now, when you are deciding to throw away all of those distractions and just to focus on what that really goes on inside of yourself, and it doesn't mean to be selfish, it's not to take care of yourself and think only about yourself and bother on it. No, it's to listen to the voice of your soul. It's to listen to your emotions, to your feelings, to what did you're going through. Okay, now I need to eat. You receive that plate. You have that food. Now try to feel what you feel about that food. Do you really want to eat it? Okay, so how much you want to eat? With what you want to start? Do you want to start with the meat with the vegetables, with the rice, what, which part of the food? You want to wash your hands to do netila? No, there is bread on the table. What's the connection between the fact that there is bread on the table? Okay, Hashem put bread on the table. Now, should I eat from that bread or not? Or well, maybe I should just eat the rice and, and the chicken. Or, or what should I eat? <clears throat> what is my point? What is my place? What, where, where I belong in that meal? Should I eat all of it? Should I just taste? Should I choose by the smell, by the color? Should I make my wife happy by eating something? Or maybe I should really consider my, my stomach and, and, and my ability to eat right now. Or Those are things that only a person that listens to his inner voice, he can do the right thing. 
if you're distracted, he's afraid. What people are going to say? Or he feels such hunger now. Or the smells are making him so confused and he's losing his mind because all of the colors and the, and the, the, the steam and the heat and the, oh, it smells so... That's an imagination. And then you lose your mind by eating the same food. Because you gave power to the external world to control your decisions. And you lost the free choice. And now you're not eating. The food is eating you. The houses are buying you. Instead, you're going to go and buy a house. The properties are running your life. The business is running your life. Instead, that you're going to stand and take decisions in your own business. It's the same business. It's the same you. Just the question is, who is on top? Who takes the decision? When you lose the will, when you lose the leadership on your body, on your life, on your decisions, so you let the world run your life, and then you lose your mind and you become crazy. Because the world is crazy and it's spinning and it's running and people are here and there and you can literally disappear between, between the people. Billions of people and who am I? And okay. But if you're going to just stop for a second and breathe, I'm just, just going to try to see who really you are in all of this crazy game. Who really you are. Who Hashem made you to be. Listen to the voice of your soul. Listen to your emotions, to your thoughts. Then you will be able to reveal the potential that is hidden inside of you. Then you'll find the right advice, the advice that Hashem, the Creator, is sending to you. And people that are developing deep awareness to themselves, they literally can hear a voice. Not voices that you should go to the doctor and to, that he will write some pills for you to balance yourself. Not those kind of voices. Just an inner voice. And how are you going to recognize that voice? from the rest of the voices. How, okay, oh, is it him? No, that's what it, it was something else. No. How are you going to know? So, the voice of Hashem is very gentle and quiet and calming and relaxing and brings you to satisfaction and to joy, to clarity, to good places, to understand yourself, to feel complete with yourself, to find inner satisfaction from life. That's Hashem. When you want to connect yourself to the Creator, so you ask yourself, who is the Creator? The Creator is not that one that other people described to us, that He is it. No. The Creator is Him, who that He really is. So, if you went and you heard opinions about the Creator, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the real Creator. Even if he was well described and people are so talented, explaining and telling. For an example, a student of mine asked, asked me a question. She said that she asked a question in class. She went to, to a class and she asked the teacher over there a question. And immediately the teacher was, he dropped the question completely. He didn't answer her question at all. And he just explained to her that her confusion is coming from something else that she was mentioning in, in that question. He literally didn't answer her question at all. And he explained to her why she is confused in her life. Something else. Now, that's not the right answer. You didn't answer the question. Now she will go and feel confusion because of an answer that she received on a question that she never asked. So you can lose your mind by going to a class, asking a question, and receive rebukes and answers on something else. And, like, and when she explained it to me, it was clear that that teacher was very, very far from answering. Like He just rebuked her on something that he felt that she needs to be rebuked on. Because she asked something in a way that was not appropriate for a woman to ask a question in a class. Okay, so he destroyed her. So now I had to go and fix it. So you can hear classes from very important teachers, but those teachers won't be important to the good side. They will be important in the dark side. Very important. 
So you need to stay away from them. You need to stay away. And how are you going to know? How are you going to tell? Everyone are idolizing that man. And everyone are saying that that rabbi is so important and that you must hear his like. Okay, and you... Okay, good, great. Let's hear. Let's... Tamur ukitov Hashem. I want to taste and to feel that Hashem is good. Great. So what you do? You sit and listen. And if in that class suddenly you feel like it's not good for me. It doesn't build me. And you find that, that fear starts penetrating into your systems. And you're scared. And you don't know what to do. And those advice are confusing you. And now you have doubts on other things. And you lose your grip. You came because you felt weak. And now you've been destroyed. So that rabbi can be very important. But maybe it does not, the information is not good for you. Maybe even though that he's famous, maybe even though that he's great, in, I don't know, for other people, maybe it doesn't do good for you. So you must listen to your inner thoughts and to consider them and to give respect to yourself, to appreciate your own thoughts and your own feelings because those are the tools that Hashem, the Creator, gave you to feel with and to think with and to judge with. And if you're going to ignore your feelings and your emotions and your senses, you ignore what the Hashem Barach is telling you because Hashem is talking to you from inside. And you must listen to yourself. Now the thing is that people lost because of all of that effort of the evil inclination to destroy people's self-esteem, that people will lose their inner connection to the source of answers, to the truth that lives inside of them. So people lost their trust in themselves. So they're doubting their own thoughts. But who said that I'm right? But who said that what that I feel is the truth? But who said that that's the right way? Results will bring you to know if you were right or wrong. But meanwhile, you need to follow your heart. And if you're not going to follow your heart, you're going to lose your heart. You're going to follow other person's heart. Okay? You're going to follow other person's advice. Okay? Does it sound logic to you? You're going to start following another person's life, another person's heart. How can you live on the heart of someone else? You must have your own heart to live. Two people cannot live on the same heart. Him and you. And especially that in most of the cases, he doesn't have a heart. If he doesn't have a heart, how can you live on his heart? If he would have such a big heart. Okay, that's good. But usually people doesn't really have a heart. Like that example that we just said. If a person is asking a question, and now instead of being answered on her question, she's going to be rebuked on something that was not appropriate. Okay, help her. Give her an advice. Don't rebuke her. And especially in public, you're doing something wrong. That's it. She's done. If she wouldn't have another way of receiving information, someone else that can give her an advice, she would be out. Because a person is he, he's not able to deal with rebukes. And rebukes in public, in front of many people, and from an important person that is speaking in front of you. It's lethal. It's dangerous. So even that a person can be a great speaker, he doesn't always have a heart that can give you life. And Hashem gave you a heart. And with your heart you can feel, and you can sense, and you can think with your mind, with your emotions, with your wisdom, with your life experience. And that's what you need to use. And to follow your heart, it doesn't mean to drop the Torah and to drop the Mesorah, the tradition and the wisdom of the righteous people. Not at all. If you're going to look deep inside of yourself, you're going to find a desire to connect yourself to the Torah. You will find real respect to the righteous people. You're going to find that inside of you there is a real holy righteous man that wants to attach himself to holy good people, to righteous people, to kind people, to nice people. You're going to find an inner connection to the Torah. You're going to find an inner connection to reality. Instead of following other people like a blind person with no connection to your actions. Because you can find yourself praying in a synagogue, you can find yourself going and doing certain things in life with no happiness, with no joy, with no satisfaction from those things. So what's the worth of doing things like that? In the end, after 10 years, 20 years of working like an animal, like a donkey, 
functioning and running and, 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 and cooperating and, and fulfilling your, your, your obligation and starting to do the best that you can and listen to whatever they're going to tell you to do. After look, you look, you look at your life after 10, 20 years, what am I doing? You're asking yourself. It's not me. I lost myself in that journey. You need to bring yourself to Hashem. You need to find where Hashem takes a place inside of your own life. You need to find your connection to the Creator. Even if you find yourself in a synagogue with other 50 people, even if you find yourself sitting and learning Torah, even if you, whatever, even if you're working in a business, you cannot really be part of the system without staying an individual with your unique qualities and talents and sense of humor and thoughts and way of thinking and way of organizing things. If you won't work in your order by your heart, based your thoughts on your life experience and your knowledge and your understanding on how, of how to do things, you're not going to make it. You're just going to lose yourself in that system and it can be a very holy system, a very amazing system. But you're going to lose yourself over there and you're going to start imitating others and losing the treasures that the Creator treasured inside of you. You're going to lose your unique light. That light that the Creator sent through you to the world. And our mission is never to block that light of the Creator. Now what can you do that the Creator chose you to reveal His light through you? What can you do? It's your mission. You can have questions on why and on how, but it's a fact that the Creator gave you certain things that He didn't give no one else except of you. And you must uncover those great lights, those qualities, those talents that God gave you, hide inside of you, and you must uncover them and reveal them to the world. And we need you to do that. We need every person with talents. We need people with power, with wisdom. They, that they're going to help. That they're going to provide. That they're going to help. They're going to support their circles, their neighborhoods, their communities. That they will reveal their wisdom to the world. And then the world will become a better place. But if everyone will be so scared and terrified, no, I must hide, I don't know what to do, I cannot, I cannot express myself, I cannot talk, I'm not allowed to do this, I'm not allowed to do that, so the world will stay gray. The world will be dark. And we, can, we won't be able to enjoy the, the talents and the wisdom of, of so many people. Today, that the social media is, is open and running and, and revealed to the world, so you can enjoy so much information. You can hear so many rabbis. You have such a huge ra ra rainbow of, of, of options of Jewish music that you like to hear, of other music that you like to hear, of art, of knowledge, science. You can learn. You can see so many things. You can learn so much. Only because that Hashem opened that opportunity for people to express themselves. Now, when people dare to do that, so you can enjoy and learn from their wisdom. And who is the wise person? The one that is able to learn from every human being, from every creation, without judging and criticizing, oh no, he is not Jewish, oh he is not Hasid, oh he is not this, he is not that, he is about Tshuva. And then you disqualify people, erasing people. The only thing that you did is that you disqualified the Bible of the Creator. You disqualified complete parashat from the Bible. Long, long verses you erased by saying, no, he's not a chassid. Okay, so you took a whole parasha from the Bible and you erased it. No, I don't like parashat uh, Noach. No, I don't like uh, parashat Yitro. No, I don't like the, the kitetze, kitavon. I don't like those parashot. What are you talking about? You don't like those parashot. It's part of the Bible. The number of holy souls of the souls of our nation is 600,000 souls. The same equal number to the letters of the Bible. The souls of Israel are the souls that are receiving the light from the Bible itself, from the letters of the Torah. And those letters are shining into the souls of Israel. And now you're going to say, okay, so I'm going to learn only from Jewish. But the holy books are saying that the souls of the converts are souls of Jewish people. 
and the Noachites are also holding from the sparks of those souls of Israel inside of them. And if you are not going to accept them, you will never going to enjoy the light that Hashem, the Creator, He chose them to spread His light between them. That they are going to be the light to the nations. That they are going to illuminate the world with the light of faith. And you, by erasing them, erase the light of the Creator. By blocking yourself from receiving from them, from what they have to share and to give to the world, you block the light of the Creator from yourself. The main one that is losing is you. By criticizing and judging and closing yourself from them. Thinking to yourself that you're protecting yourself from some wicked demon. I don't know which kind of imagination. Only fears and anxieties of people that are disconnected from the voice of their own souls. And by being divided from themselves, because of being divided from their, the soul, the, the voice of their own souls, because of that, they're not able to communicate with other people. They cannot listen to other opinion because they're afraid to be exposed. People that are always arguing are people that have something to hide. So you as a person must stop hiding, must stop arguing all of the time and trying to justify yourself all of the time. The main thing that we need to do is to try to listen. If now someone came to you and he rebuked you and he told you something wrong about yourself, you need to check, really to check and to be strong enough that to, to admit that if you were wrong to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I did something wrong. And if you feel that that person is blaming you on something that you never done, that you never did, so you can say that. You know, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I, I did that thing. I'm willing to explain myself. And if I'm wrong, please, please teach me. If I'm wrong, maybe I'm, 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 I'm disconnected. Maybe I'm, 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 I'm denying. Maybe I can't see. But I think that I did something else, so explain yourself, it's okay. If you're really open to a discussion, to a conversation, and your will is really to find the truth in the end of that conversation, you're going to find the truth. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. When you're seeking for the truth, you'll find it. So you just need to go all the way seeking for the truth, asking for the truth. No matter if it's unpleasant, if it's not joyful, if it's not fun, if it's sometimes so painful and, 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 and confusing, don't be scared from that pain. That pain will heal you. The truth will heal the person. The truth will give the person the tools to grow and to succeed. And which truth is it? We're talking about simple honesty. The ability to admit in your mistakes and really to be able to say your thoughts and to share with your emotions and really to just be who that you are and not to be so scared from being who that you are. If you're an artist, if you're a, a musician, if, if, if you're, a, I don't know, a ballet dancer, it's not important. <laughs> if that passion, if that, that, that thing runs in your blood, and that's what that you feel like doing. And that's what that you feel that, that Hashem sent you with that talent, with that ability. So you need to see how to use those talents, those power that you received from heaven in the right way. Because you know also that when you let your habits take control over your life, you can also lose your mind with them. You're an amazing chef. You're an amazing cook. Okay, but you know that you can also be too radical with that. And you can just waste thousands of, of hours in the kitchen and, and making and doing it. Okay, so it's also too much. So you don't need to be radical. Okay, now I'm going to be a ballet dancer and that's it. No. You don't cut your beard and go and be a ballet dancer. But you cannot ignore the fact that you want to dance. So you should dance. But you should find the right way how to dance. First of all, you're not supposed to fight with yourself and to argue with yourself and to hate yourself on your passion and on your desire. You should just ask Hashem, Hashem, why you gave me that desire? What should I do with that desire? 
what should I do with that passion that is like a flame of fire burns inside of my, 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 my soul? What is it that you want me to do with those abilities of mine? With that will that I have to do certain things, to run, to jog, to play basketball, to go fishing, to go to the sea, to swim, to go to the gym every morning, to run. What is your will? What do you really want me to do with that? Can I also do that and keep on serving you? Can I do those things and not losing my mind because of that? Can I do it in a kosher way? Is there a kosher way to do that? And then you're going to find the answer. But only after you're going to ask for it. Only if you're going to, if you will be like you, 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 English is such a crooked language. <laughs> Hebrew is so much better, really. Leshana <laughs> Kodesh. So much better. One day, one day I'm going to teach you Hebrew. It's written that all of the nations are going to speak the holy language when Mashiach will come. Everyone will learn the Shana Kodesh. There was a, once I was in a, in a funeral of a student of mine that passed away, and he was uh, from America. And um, and before that he, before that we buried him, so my rabbi came to him and spoke to him in Hebrew and he told him, Kalman Nachman, you need to know, Kalman Nachman ben Peretz Herschel, you need to know that you're dead. It's written that the person, when, he, when he's dead, sometimes he doesn't know even that he's dead. He doesn't have the merit from heaven to know that he died. He can still think that he's alive and he's looking around and he's like he's stuck in a situation. He doesn't, he can't move so much, but uh, it's not like it used to. But he doesn't understand. He doesn't not understand that he's dead yet. It's it's a certain punishment. So in Breslev, there are many people that used to tell the deceased, the person that passed away. I'm explaining it to myself not to you, that he's dead. So, my rabbi told him, Kalman Nachman ben Peretz Herschel, you should know now that you're dead. And so after he told him that in, in, in Hebrew, and for me it was a little bit weird, because that person, he didn't know how to speak Hebrew, he wouldn't understand. So I asked him, I asked him, you, t you told him that in Hebrew, but he was speaking English, so he told me when he was alive, he was not able to listen through his soul. This is why he couldn't understand the holy language. But now he had to hear like from his memory that he learned English and he speaks English. But now that his ears are not working anymore and he listens from his soul, so he understands the holy language. Now he can hear the holy language. So you don't need to... So when Mashiach will come, he will, he will just open the hearts of the people to understand the holy language. And everyone will understand Hebrew. Everyone will be able to speak Hebrew and to understand Hebrew. And they're going to catch it and it's going to be like clear as the sun. Oh, I got it. It's simple. Today... If it, there are many, many people that are learning Hebrew and they're thinking to the, like they, 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 they worked many, many years on learning Hebrew, but they're not speaking Hebrew. They know Hebrew, but they're not willing to speak Hebrew. So ask yourself, as a person like that, or try to think, why that person, he doesn't speak Hebrew if he can, if he knows. So it's, it's, I don't want to say only, but in most of the cases, it's because of certain gava, certain arrogance of the person that he may be a very hurt person, like a, a, a person that went through a lot of disgrace and insultings in his life. He doesn't want to be hurt again. He's afraid to use his Hebrew because he doesn't want to make no mistakes. That's why he doesn't speak, because he doesn't want to mistake. He doesn't want other people to see that his Hebrew is not perfect. 
So he won't speak. But you know how to speak. Obviously, you're going to make mistakes. If I wouldn't try to speak English, if you're going to try, if you think that now I'm funny, you need to see my first videos. Oh, that was hilarious. Seven, eight, nine years ago on YouTube, search for the first videos. Like, if you want to have, like, a great time, you need to watch my first videos. It was so funny. I couldn't even say my name in English when I started. It was so hard. And I learned from the experience. I was asking my students um, while the classes, how you say this, how you say that, and I'm in Hebrew, like, and it's very funny. So if you are not humbling yourself and you're willing to learn, so you're never going to learn. Only when you're humble and you're willing to learn, so then you can learn and then you can express your wisdom. But when you're still arrogant and you don't want to be disgraced and you don't want to be ashamed and, you, and you're thinking too much, so okay, you know Hebrew, but you're not using it. You know many, many things and you're not using them. A person must use the wisdom that he achieved in life. So now, like we said before, if you have your talents, if you have your abilities, if you have gifts that you received from heaven, and now you're not using them, so you're exactly like a person that is completely poor, that doesn't have those talents, that doesn't have those abilities. If you had the power to do certain things, to play, to dance, to sing, to run, to talk, to, 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 to work, to think, to remember, and you're not using those things because you're scared, because you're afraid, because you're too shy, so you, you, you live your life in poverty instead of living life of happiness and satisfaction and doing and making big things in your life. And the worst thing of them all is that all of those talents and gifts that you received from heaven are actually things that Hashem gave you, the Creator gave you, because you're on a mission. Because you have things that you need to do. Because that's the purpose of your life, to be who that God made you to be. And if you're not going to let yourself be that one, you're blocking the light of the Creator. You're blocking the opportunity of other people to enjoy from the light of the Creator that He gave you to spread and to give and to share. And I'm finding that when a person is doing that, he's working hard on being who that he is and, and not letting his fears and, and, and stress overpower on his decisions. And he just let go of those fears. And he dares to do things to talk and to express himself and to share and to explain and to be who that he really is. So then the, the, the way becomes very, very, it takes him very, very fast. Much faster than before. Because the inner connection to the Creator brings you to results much, much faster than to try to develop based on the external world and other people's advice and other people's opinions. When you really find that inner connection, it's, it's, it's like when, when you want to connect yourself to something, you can make it in one step and you can make it in, in a long, long chain of, 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 of links, one after the other. One tie connects you to the next and then the next to the third, the third to the fourth. and it, It's going to be weaker than to have an inner connection to the Creator. So why not to reconnect yourself from inside? And doing that by that simple, simple act of prayer. Thinking about the Creator and praying to Him and expressing your emotions and your will and your desire. When I started my tshuva, when I started believing in Hashem Yitbarach, I was talking to Him from the beginning because He became a reality in my life. So if He was reality and now what can I do except of... I felt that He is inside my life. I saw His supervision. I saw His hand. I saw Him moving things in my life. So if He is communicating with me, if He is interfering in my life, so I can also be in touch with Him. I can also talk to Him. I can also put myself in His place. If there is a connection, if there is a bridge, if there is a path, a way, there is a door, there is a way to communicate, so it's not only from one side, to, to, from his side to me. I can also ask him questions. If he's answering my doubts and he's solving my problems, so if I have more questions to ask, so I can ask and then he will help. 
It's simple math. And when a person is willing to do that, to open himself to the Creator, he can enjoy the bounty of Hashem. And that's why I told you in the beginning of this class that every person can achieve that level of Moshe Rabbeinu. And it's not hard. When Yeshua Binun is coming to Moshe and telling him, listen, there are people that, uh, that are... are uh, come up, Kadima. You're going to say it. Mit nab'im. How you say mit? Prophesizing. In the camp. <laughs> Moshe. People are prophesizing in the camp. So Moshe Rabbeinu told him, I wish that all of Am Israel will be prophets. I don't mind. So what? Yoshua Binun was scared. He was afraid. Oh no, other people are going to have different opinions. They won't. If they are real prophets, if they are receiving the wisdom from Hashem, so they are going to say the same thing like Moshe. When you're afraid that someone else will think something else from you or whatever, it means that you're not connected to the truth. If you're connected to the truth, you don't care if there are other people that are talking and speaking. Who cares? When you're holding the truth, you don't care what other people think. You don't care what other people are going to say. You say the truth. And you know that your truth will connect to their truth if they're going to hold the truth. And you're going to be the best friends. And it doesn't matter if you're both Hasidim or both Jewish or not Jewish. It doesn't matter. You can have peace with every person of truth. If you're holding the truth... You don't have no war with no one else. And if someone wants to fight with you, he's fighting with the truth, so he becomes to be an enemy of the Creator. Anyway, you don't have a problem. So when a person is holding that truth, he will reach the truth very, very fast, in a much easier path, easier way. Very, very fast, he's going to find himself enjoying the Divine Spirit and amazing power of Hashem to help you, to give you confidence, to give you strength, to give you wisdom, to give you bounty, spiritual and, and physical, to help you in everything that you need, to give you the right advice. And the connection is an inner connection. And the way to do it, it's to work on your own self-awareness, to connect yourself through prayers, to the truth of your own heart, to be honest about your journey, to be honest about your emotions, about your feelings, and not to be afraid and scared to express them and to share and to tell them to other people. Just to work as hard as you can on that and to become your true self. And when you're going to do that, you're going to find true happiness. You're going to find an answer to all of your questions, to all of your doubts. You won't be scared anymore. When a person is scared, it's because that he's got something to hide. But when you're not hiding anymore, and you just say the truth, the whole truth, the embarrassing truth. You won't be embarrassed anymore because you said the truth and you're going to feel relief. You're going to feel much easier and good with yourself. Even if you're going to say, I was weak, so what? I was wrong, so what? I'm apologizing, so what? Now you're going to feel much lighter. It's going to give you the power not to fail again. If now you lied on something, and you're afraid to admit. And someone's going to try to expose you. And you're going to tell you, you lied. What are you going to do? You have to lie again. So you're going to lie about the first lie. And then he's going to tell you, but you're lying. So you're going to have to lie again. No, I'm not. Third lie. And then if he's going to just keep on asking and investigating, you're going to find yourself drowning in your own lies. And now after one month, after three months, he's going to ask you on it again, and you're going to fail again in lies. Why? Because you're not even going to remember what were your excuses last month. Because it's very hard to remember lies. Hashem won't help you. The reality you remember, but your scam and your lies and your excuses, you're not going to remember them. But He will. Because he is very motivated to uncover you. Because Hashem gives him the power to do that. So he will uncover you. And it's only because that Hashem wants to connect you to the truth. So very fast he's revealing your lies. And exposing you and helping you to understand that you're lying to yourself. But in the moment that you're going to stop. In the moment. Even after 5,000 lies. You're just going to stop and going to say... I'm sorry, I lied. That's where the story is going to finish. And you're going to have a new start based on honesty and on dignity. 
and you'll, the, 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 the honor and the respect will come back to you on admitting that you were lying until now. The fact that you finally said the truth will bring back the honor that you were so afraid to lose, that brought you to lie so many lies. When a person admits and he drops his past, his lies, and he admits, I was wrong, I'm sorry, immediately. Because that he dropped his desire for honor, Hashem will respect him, Hashem will honor him. In the moment that you run away from the honor, the honor is chasing after you. And when you're trying to chase after the honor, the honor will run away from you. A person must be a man of truth, a person of truth. And when you chase the truth, you'll find it. And when you'll admit, you'll become a real Baal Tshuva. You'll find the answer to all of your questions. And the blessing will be in your heart, in your houses, between all of you guys, all of your beloved ones. Amen. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.